Hello folks, it is Friday, March the 5th, and coming up in this episode, Formula One launch after Formula One launch, but we still haven't yet seen exactly every detail of the cars that will hit the track in one week's time in Bahrain, and we are still yet to see the Ferrari. Uh, we'll have news from the other side of the pond in the US, from NASCAR, from IndyCar, uh, which has been testing from Formula E, and big news coming out of the World Endurance Championship, all coming your way this week on this week's episode of This Week. And we start, of course, with news that Mercedes, the reigning world champions, have unveiled the W12. Now, they were quite reserved, shall we say, in showing us everything and telling us everything. They wouldn't say where they have spent their upgrade tokens. They also shrouded the floor, saying that they are absolutely certain that whenever they unveil what they have done to their floor, everybody else is going to want to copy it. So we are not going to see that until we find ourselves in Bahrain next week uh, for the opening test of, well, I say opening test, it's only three days of testing for the 2021 season. The team, though, sounding bullish that they can, can continue, I should say, easy for me to say, it's still early in the morning, uh, their amazing run of championship successes. Moving on to Alpine, who launched their A521 via a very cool holographic launch with the car in the middle, uh, Lee McKenzie presenting the drivers, well, driver, singular, Esteban Ocon, um, and team management all appearing in virtual reality. It was really cool. It was a really novel, really good way um, of doing a socially distanced launch in these strange and unprecedented times. Uh, have we seen the A521? Bits of it, not all of it. We can say the livery looks great, but the car itself, well, that went to shake down at Silverstone at the hands of Esteban Ocon, but we still haven't seen all of the details of it, a number of teams still keeping all of those details secretive uh, until we get to Bahrain. Um, as I said, only Ocon at the launch, no Fernando Alonso, still recovering, uh, of course, from his road accident. But he had put a, a message up on the internet the day before to show that he, he could talk, his mouth was moving. So odd that he wasn't at the launch, um, but he has also unveiled his helmet for the year. I think it's incredibly cool. Uh, it is a throwback to his 2006 World Championship winning helmet. Uh, and I think it's really great. Ocon's new helmet uh, unveiled as well. That's about what we can go on at the moment. How the car's liveries look and how the helmets look because we're just not being shown the full details of the cars. Uh, one detail which we were told, however, is that there will not be a full-time replacement for Cyril Abitbul as team principal at Renault slash Alpine. Instead, that job will be split between Davide Brivio and Martin Bukowski. And in other Alpine news, they announced that Danny Fiat will be joining the team as their reserve and test driver this year. Great news for Danny, brilliant racing driver, had a stellar end to the 2020 campaign, so uh, great to see him landing on his feet. Another team unveiling their challenger for 2021, and it was one of the most eagerly anticipated launches of launch season, and it is of course Aston Martin, the AMR21, and it was a glitzy affair, not just a Bond girl, but James Bond himself, Daniel Craig, uh, turning up to uh, wish the team well. The car looks phenomenal. Um, yes, it has similarities to last year's Mercedes, um, but to say it is a green Mercedes, I think would be unfair. Um, some people already cruelly saying that you just take the uh, AMG and replace the G with the R for the AMR, but it is more than that. Even though the team has, of course, taken the free upgrade at the rear of the car, as they're allowed to do between 20 to 21 as a customer team, they have spent their tokens uh, on an entirely new tub and the car's design direction is taking it away from that core Mercedes philosophy that we've seen. It is very much an Aston Martin car. So the green Mercedes, 
I think a little bit cruel. Um, Sebastian Vettel, Lance Stroll, both on hand, both at Silverstone just yesterday to shake the car down. It looks beautiful. Uh, it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, seemingly runs well, although again, we will only see the details. We will only know the truth when we hit Bahrain in one week's time. But it is, I will say, good to see Sebastian Vettel smiling again. And of all the things said, at the launch, perhaps the one thing to take the most note of is that Lawrence Stroll has put a five-year program in place, a five-year plan to win the World Championship. Aston Martin aren't playing around. They are very, very serious. The Haas F1 team have unveiled, well, we can't say it's the VF21 because it wasn't. It's last year's car with this year's livery and as with much to do with the Haas F1 team over the last few months, it has courted a little bit of controversy. Um, it, it was not the colours we were expecting, it's white, blue and red. And the way in which the design has been done has led many to ask the question as to whether it contravenes the rules as laid down by WADA and the uh, Court of Arbitration for Sport, which of course has banned the use of the Russian flag in sporting competition. Haas itself has said uh, that the livery, the design has been cleared for use by the FIA, but that uh, hasn't stopped people from questioning whether it is entirely in keeping with the meaning of the, uh, the regulations as they stand anyway. Um, regardless, it's, uh, it's not a bad looking livery, it will certainly stand out. Um, but it has caused a little bit of controversy. Uh, the team have said they will not develop this car at all. What hits the track in Bahrain, whatever the car looks like, and we don't know what it will look like yet, that will be it for the entire season, making an already difficult job for the team's two rookies potentially even harder. And Williams have launched their car just today. Again, a controversial livery, um, but only because some people love it, some people hate it. It's, uh, it's a bit Marmite uh, in that regard. I personally love it. it. Reminds me of the 1993 Ligier art car. It's phenomenal. Anyway, none of that matters. The only thing that does matter for Williams this year is starting the recovery, getting themselves off last place in the Constructors' Championship and fighting back towards the front. And if this is the car that starts that recovery, that really will be all that matters but frankly I think it looks great. Other Williams news of course was that earlier in the week the team had confirmed uh, that Jamie Chadwick who I believe will also return uh, in W Series this year to defend her crown uh, will return uh, as a team's development driver and Jack Aitken is back on board as well for the team as their reserve. Formula E now and uh, a great start to the season two great races in Saudi Arabia the first one utterly dominated by Nick De Vries in the Mercedes, the second won by Sam Bird, but stopped early uh, due to a red flag after a massive shunt for Alex Lynn, who was thankfully okay. Uh, great to see Mitch Evans as well, actually, who was involved in the accident, ruining his race um, by stopping and making sure that Alex was okay. Uh, a selfless act there uh, from Mitch, which you would expect. Uh, from Mitch. Great guy. Um, massive accident also earlier in the weekend for Eduardo Mortara, which actually saw the uh, Venturis and the Mercedes pulled for a little while while they checked uh, what had actually gone wrong on Edo's car. Thankfully, he's, he's all right too. Um, a number of penalties after the second race, though, led to um, some discontent, some disquiet, because uh, some of the penalties were applied for not using attack mode, despite the fact that that attack mode couldn't be used because they were under a safety car, and then a red flag. So, uh, something there from a regulatory perspective, certainly I think that needs to be looked at uh, for the future. Uh, also, uh, it was reported and later confirmed by those on the ground uh, that the paddock had been made aware of a missile strike by uh, Houthi rebels in the uh, surrounding area, uh, which had been intercepted just 10 miles uh, from the track. Now, apparently these things happen quite regularly, um, nothing to be worried about, but uh, nevertheless, it was uh, a bit of a worry for those on the event. Now, in the World Endurance Championship, Glickenhaus has sadly reported that it will not make the first round in Portimao. It had always been due to miss the first race in Sebring, but when the championship start was uh, delayed to Portimao, there were hopes that it could make that first round. But the um, uh, 
007 didn't actually hit the track until a month after it was supposed to. So they are running uh, currently behind. So big shame there for Glickenhaus, but the car did hit the track, has hit the track. And we reported that last week and it spent most of this week running at Monza. So uh, great to see it. It does look phenomenal and it sounds great. So uh, yeah, best of luck to the Glickenhaus guys. Uh, in possibly the biggest World Endurance Championship news of the week though, the Le Mans 24 Hours has moved its date to later in the year. It will now run in August, which will mean a very different challenge uh, for all of the drivers. The temperatures will be much, much higher coming in those late summer days. So uh, a unique and new challenge for Le Mans uh, for 2021. As a result, IMSA um, and other endurance championships have had to move some of their uh, uh, rounds around in order to not clash with Le Mans. And in other endurance news, uh, Action Express Racing has confirmed that Jimmy Johnson Kamu Kobayashi and Simon Pagano have all been retained and will return for the three remaining races in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship Michelin Endurance Cup. Gotta love America for a complicated championship name. <laughs> in IndyCar, Patricio O'Ward topped a four-team test at Laguna Seca, which saw the Dale Coyne duo uh, of Ed Jones and Roman Grosjean finish second and third. Uh, the lineup for this year's IndyCar series looks phenomenal. The depth of talent throughout that field just astonishing. Uh, and it's been added to just this week, as Dale Coyne has announced that Pietro Fittipaldi will race the ovals that Roman Grosjean won't. So good to see Pietro and uh, Roman, the old stable mates from Haas, lining up together uh, in IndyCar this season. Uh, IndyCar series have had their media day, uh, their content creation day just yesterday. And uh, by far and away, the most important news, I think, of this week is that Connor Daly is rocking what can only be described as a glorious mullet. It's really quite something. In NASCAR, William Byron uh, continued this trend of unexpected winners uh, in the opening rounds, uh, taking the victory. Um, but after two first time winners in the first two races, couldn't quite repeat that. It was nevertheless only his second cup victory. In Aussie supercars, Shane Van Gisbergen picked up where he left off in the Toyota Racing Series early this year um, by absolutely crushing the first two races at Mount Panorama. Uh, he lead the championship uh, from Chaz Mostert and uh, Will Davison uh, after those first two races, which sadly it seems won't be repeated in the future. The focus, of course, is getting the Bathurst 1000 back, um, but great to see those two rounds um, at Mount Panorama. In the DTM, Apt Audi have confirmed Mike Rockefeller and Kelvin van der Lint will contest the all new GT3 championship for them in 2021. And in the BTCC this week, surprising news that Dan Kamish will not return for Team Dynamics in 2021, despite the expectation being that he would uh, be continuing with the team for a, a fourth season. Real big surprise there, real shock. In the WRC, Ott Tanak won the Arctic Rally, but the big news was that by finishing second in the Arctic Rally, Kale Robin Pera has become the youngest WRC championship leader in history. He leads uh, Thierry Neuville in the championship. Thierry, uh, who is still struggling uh, with his new co-driver, having uh, made the surprise jump earlier in the year, um, they are still struggling with a bit of a language barrier. So uh, yeah, uh, not all going great uh, for Thierry and his, uh, and his new co-driver. Um, sad news though, uh, in the week that Hanu Mikola, uh, absolute rally legend he was, of course, a uh, world rally champion, a seven time winner of the Thousand Lakes Rally, uh, passed away uh, after a battle with cancer. Uh, an absolute hero and an absolute legend to everyone in the world of motorsport. He will be sadly missed. Well, folks, that's about it for this week. I know the camera work's not been as good as last week. Um, 
I apologize for that. It's been me on my own again. <laughs> um, thank you for your support. Thank you for your comments, for your questions. Hit that subscription button. Make sure you ring that notifications bell. And look, we've got a merch line. So uh, yeah, hit that if you want. We'd really appreciate that. 20% uh, of all profit is going to charity. Uh, for now though, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. That's your lot. And we'll see you next week where Formula One testing will have started in Bahrain for the next episode of This Week. <laughs>